everyone. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me. So, uh, today I wanted to do um, a little taste testing of this uh, collection of Mexican chocolate that I picked up from, um, actually not your typical grocery store. I, uh, last weekend I went to Pentacles. National Monument, which is in the middle of California. It's a really interesting place to go if you are ever in California. Um, but they have campgrounds there, and I was camping there with some friends. And they also have a grocery store there, which has sort of just like your typical things that people might need in a convenience store and camping supplies and stuff too. And but. They also randomly had this little pack of chocolate that apparently was like the last one left. And uh, so I thought I'd get it because it looked interesting. So this is Mexican chocolate and it has... It has eight different flavors. Um, Mexican chocolate, I've only, I think I've had it like once before. I think the texture is like a little different than like your typical other types of chocolate that you may have had. Um, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try all of these, I think, today if our video doesn't go too long. <laughs> Um, I also have a nice cold glass of milk here to uh, cleanse my palate between these different types because the flavors are actually kind of interesting. So this comes with uh, cinnamon, coffee, vanilla, uh, this one says salted almond. This one says um, Wahio chili. I think that's how you say it. I'm not really sure. I've never heard of that before, but some type of chili. So that one should be probably spicy. And then we have just sort of a, a standard 70% dark chocolate. Then we have a chipotle chili flavored chocolate. And then the last one says super dark, which, yeah, it's 85%, which I really like, actually, 85% chocolate. Uh, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Um, so, uh, the thing about this type of chocolate is that not only can you eat it just straight as it is, but you can actually turn it into hot chocolate. So it says, delicious to eat or drink. Uh, yeah, so apparently inside the box there is some instructions on how to make Mexican style hot chocolate, which sounds so good, even though the weather's been, it's been warm lately, but, um, you know, in the evenings where I live, it cools down, so even a cup of hot chocolate is nice uh, late at night. So here you can see it has all their flavors again. The dark chocolate, the cinnamon, coffee, vanilla, uh, salted almond, wahio chili, the regular dark chocolate, and then uh, chipotle chili. 
So the brand is Taza Chocolate, I think. Yeah, Taza Chocolate. It's organic. And it's stone ground. So it says here, we make stone ground organic chocolate. Cacao is so complex in flavor that we want to let it shout out, shout loud and proud. That is why we do less to bring you more. We stone grind cacao beans to perfect to perfectly unrefined, minimally processed chocolate with bold flavor and texture, unlike anything you've ever tasted. And it looks like a little picture of like a hand hand carved granite millstone. I wonder if that's what they actually use or not. Or maybe that's just a part of the image, you know? <laughs> um, though this says it was made in Massachusetts, I'm guessing that's what that means. <laughs> so it's Mexican chocolate from Massachusetts. <laughs> so me there's Massachusetts Mexicans, you know? Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and open this box and... Uh, see uh, if we can find those instructions for the hot chocolate. Let's see, like I don't want to rip this thing. How'd I get this? So I actually have tried the first one already. <laughs> um, I like was an eager beaver and wanted to try it already before I made the video, but I had to stop so you can see I actually nibbled a little chunk off this one already. <laughs> Um, it's pretty good, but I'm gonna go ahead and try it again for the sake of this video and, like, describe it to you. Um, so they come in these, like, kind of, like, almost, like, coaster shapes, uh, giant medallion kind of shapes. And this is, like, it's almost like a butcher paper kind of texture here, um... I have a squeaky table. Sorry about that. I hope squeaky sounds are relaxing to you guys. <laughs> this might be a mildly squeaky video. Um, I'm gonna just take these out really quick and see if I can find those instructions because I'm really curious. Oh yeah, they're right on the inside here. So it says, uh, one cup of milk, it can be regular soy or almond milk, or you can just use water, and you use a whole disc of chocolate, and then you add a little bit of salt too if you want. So you use like a whole disc to just make one cup of hot chocolate, which sounds like it would be very, very rich, so... Maybe I'll save, um, I mean, I'll definitely save some and perhaps we'll make another video where, like, I actually make the hot chocolate. <laughs> um, we'll just do, like, half cups or something. Um, oh, you have to chop it up and set it aside and then you heat up your milk or water and then, uh, you just uh, slowly add the chopped up chocolate to the hot liquid, whichever it is you use, until it's dissolved. And, yeah. and you can like whisk it to make it like frothy, I guess. That sounds really good. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna have to try that. Video or no video, I'm definitely trying that. So, okay. Let's get these guys back in here. We'll get to actually tasting each one of these. So, this one is cinnamon. And, like I said, I've already tried a little bit. This, I guess this is called a disc of chocolate. So even, like, this is not, like, this is not even, like, the dark chocolate, but it's pretty dark when you look at it. Um, and then, like, if you look really closely, 
you can actually see like the gran the sugar gran granules in it. Um, so like I'm gonna just like break a little bit off. I don't, maybe I should just bite it. This is gonna make a mess. Oh, there we go. Mmm. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> um, so I've had Mexican chocolate before, and I'm rem remembering that for some reason they don't, they don't like, or at least the types that I've tried, they don't melt the choc, they don't melt the sugar into the chocolate, like they don't dissolve it into the chocolate, so it stays granulated, so it gives it like this kind of crunchy, like. I don't want to say sandy, that sounds bad. <laughs> it's not bad, it's good, like it's just, it's just different. I, like it's slightly gritty, it's like that crunchy, you know, sugary um, texture to it. Um, but yeah, you can definitely taste the cinnamon. Um, it's not like, it's not too rich either, it's... It's pretty good. Um, yeah, I could definitely just eat that straight as it is. <laughs> and I will probably eat half of it that way. <laughs> and then the other half I'll try the hot chocolate. So, um, let me just get some paper and dust this off. Anticipate the mess. I always forget to, uh, yeah, consider that. So that was our cinnamon. It was pretty good. So the next one is coffee. Uh, so this is what it looks like when you haven't already opened it. <laughs> yeah, I love this butcher paper. It just has like a very like handcrafted kind of feel to the packaging, you know? To the, the branding of it. It's very, and of course like the cardboard and the designs, it's very, it has like a very um, like earthy, indigenous kind of like feel to the design. I don't know, I'm a graphic designer so I, <laughs> I always um, am looking at stuff like that. Like, good graphic design kind of, like, tells the story, right? It tells the story of, like, that product that, or its brand, where it came from, you know, its origins and whatnot. Okay. So, open up our little butcher paper here. And this one... It looks about the same. I don't know, maybe it looks slightly darker to me. It looks- it might be slightly darker. So, it has these little triangles. Uh, that don't really make it- they're not particularly easy to break off. I don't know. It looks like it would be designed to break off that way, but it doesn't actually break very easily that way kind of just have to do a random chunk like that. Okay. Let's see if we can make less of a mess this time. Maybe not. Oh, sorry, my neighbor's yelling at his child. Um, we can just wait. So, you can see that the sugar granules in there, so, 
Yeah, something about the way they make the chocolate, the way they process it. They don't dissolve the sugar, so it's always kind of like a little crunchy. It's, it's a nice texture. Mmm. Ooh. That definitely has a coffee flavor. <laughs> yep. That must have, like, actual ground coffee in it or something. It basically tastes like chocolate-covered coffee beans, if you've ever had that. You can definitely taste like that. Rich, kind of, slightly, uh, like, burnt flavor of the coffee. It's, it's actually really good. This is really good. <laughs> I'm gonna eat a little more. <clears throat> oh, that was really good. I could like, I could just keep eating that one. <laughs> I mean, the last one was good too. I think I like this one a little better. I could like keep eating that one. That's really good. Coffee and chocolate, they go really well together. But we have so many more to try, so I will have to pace myself here. at my squeaky table. <laughs> it's being a nuisance. Okay. Clear a little chocolatey crumbs away and I will vacuum that up later. Okay, so next uh, we have vanilla. Oh, that sounds really good. So, vanilla. Yeah, so it looks like the ingredients are pretty simple, right? Like, cacao beans, sugar cane, or cane sugar, organic coffee beans. Like, this, this literally has like three ingredients in it. One, two, yeah, three ingredients. And yeah, three ingredients. That's like really, uh, you gotta appreciate that when, um, you know, the ingredient list is really short, not full of all kinds of stuff that you don't know what it is. You most, you know, things like things that usually are put there to like give the food like a longer shelf life so that it can sit on a shelf for like three years instead of one year or something, but then it's like, you're gonna eat that stuff, so probably not something you should be eating, but yeah, so here's vanilla, and it, it does actually have a slightly reddish color, the coffee one definitely had like a deep, you know, darker, kind of like brown, where this one looks slightly lighter and slightly red. Hmm. Okay. Let's give it a go. There's just no way to break it without making a mess. <laughs> okay. And there's my vanilla chocolate. Hmm. 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 That one's interesting. It's actually, um, ever so slightly, like, I want to say, like, tangy? I want to say it's, like, just slightly... Tangy, yeah. I mean, it's good. It tastes good. Mm. It's 
like slightly tangy and has like a almost like you know when you eat like cake <laughs> or something or like a pastry that has like chocolate and vanilla type stuff going on yeah I guess that's just what those two flavors do together um, this one's pretty good I like the coffee better this is still good I would still I would still devour this like in two minutes <laughs> if I wasn't making a video right now um, I really love chocolate by the way if you ha haven't figured that out um, but yeah Um, yeah, that one was pretty good. This color is like black or something. I don't know. A really dark, like a navy blue. Alright, this thing is like making me mad. Okay. Let's clear our table here. I'm gonna have some milk to kind of reset my palate while my neighbors have a good laugh. <sighs> hmm. That's good. Okay, so the next one, which sounds really good, is salted almond the packaging color looks similar to coffee it's slightly darker and it has um sugar cacao beans almonds salt so this one has four ingredients still really simple basic wholesome ingredients Packaging is really cute, but it's kind of a pain to open. Though, if I was just planning to use the whole thing or eat the whole thing, I wouldn't like have to worry about being careful. I'd just tear it open. <laughs> than the uh, vanilla but it has like a, a like a matte kind of I want to say finish it's like a finish it looks very matte whereas the other ones looked more shiny um I don't know if that's like what the salt does to it or what but let's just uh, give it a try it sounds like my neighbors having a good time down there Okay. Mmm. Oh, I got a little bit already. Mmm. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> They're all really good. Mmm. Wait. So I definitely taste, um, like the salt, and it's not too much, it's like just the right amount, you know? Like you have the sweet, uh, sugar, and then the salt's just kind of like, just right underneath that, you know? It's not, it's not too much. Um, yeah. 
the almond flavor, it's a lot more subtle. Um, there's not like, there's not like chunks of almond or anything in it, which I really like, you know, I love like Hershey's uh, symphony bars, the ones with like the toffee and the almond bits in it, like it's kind of crunchy. I love like crunchy bits of almond. So this doesn't really have that. And the almond flavor, I don't really taste. It's very subtle. I definitely taste the salt, which is good. Um, I don't taste the almonds so much. But um, yeah, it's still really delicious. Still would eat it in like 10 seconds flat <laughs> if I wasn't uh, being super disciplined right now. Um, so yeah. I uh, cannot wait to make some hot chocolate with this stuff. It's gonna be so yummy. Okay, so let's clear our table again. So yeah, this is like such a random thing to pick up at like a a camping office slash, like, convenience store. <laughs> you know? um, they apparently had a bunch of them, and, and like I said, this was, like, the last one um, that they had, and it was just sitting on the counter, and just went for it. The whole pack actually cost, like, $22. It was, like, pretty expensive. <laughs> um, but I was like, eh, it's, you know, I'll give it a try. Um, so here, okay, so this is the Wahio chili, which I've, n I've never even heard of that kind of chili. I hope it's not like ghost chili. Thankfully, I do have my milk on hand. Um, so if it's too spicy, I can use some cold dairy to neutralize the spice. Um, which for those of you who don't know, is actually a really good way uh, to save yourself from something that's too spicy, <laughs> like any kind of spicy food. If you eat some dairy with it, like milk or yogurt, um, even like sour cream, it will, um, it actually like chemically neutralizes the, um, the actual like spicy chemicals. Um, something in the milk, I think it's like the casein or something in the milk, like the protein like bonds with um, whatever the spicy chemicals are and like neutralizes it so it stops burning. Yeah, really good tip. See, I never really liked spicy things until I learned that tip. And now I can really enjoy spicy food um, because I know if it gets too bad, I can just chug some milk and I'll be fine. I don't have to keep suffering. <laughs> so... I can afford to be a little more risky now that I have my milk as like sort of a safety net, <laughs> a spicy safety net. Uh, so here we go, our Wahio chili. I again don't know if I'm even saying that right. I assume it's Mexican, so I'm pronouncing it the way Spanish would say it. Uh, so it looks very unassuming looks like normal chocolate. Um, it's definitely got the shine to it. Um, oh, I forgot to look at the ingredients. What does it say? Cacao, sugar, and chili powder. Yeah, that's it. Just three ingredients, so let's, uh, let's be brave. Oh, what? What is that? <gasps> what is that? What is that? <laughs> okay, I don't... There's, there's something in it. Do you guys see that? Is that paper? Is that a part of the chili? Oh, I don't know what that is. That's weird. That may just be a piece of something that got in the chocolate <laughs> that's not supposed to be there. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna break off another piece the other side and see what if I get the same thing. Yeah, okay. So, I don't think this little whatever it is is supposed to be there. 
think that's like a manufacturer's uh, defect. Um, so we'll just eat this sample from the other side. Uh, yep, it looks like ordinary chocolate, but let's see. So far, it's like a mild heat. It's pretty light. I'm just wait, I'm just giving it time. <laughs> I'm just giving it time to kick in if it's gonna suddenly kick me in the face. Like after I'm like, oh, it's not so bad, and then I'm like, holy crap, you know. Um, no, that seems to be pretty mild. Let's have another piece. Mm. You know, it has it has a bit of like a tanginess to it. Oh, you know what the tanginess is I'm thinking of? Similar to like chocolate covered raisins. You know, or it has like that little bit of fruity tang combined with the chocolate. Somehow I'm getting a little bit of that while I'm chewing it. And then after I swallow it is like when uh, the spice kind of kicks in, so feeling it like kind of in the back of my tongue and a little bit like on my like the front of my throat yeah the back of my tongue and like where the throat starts that's kind of where I feel the burning it's really light though it's not like I don't even need to drink my milk yeah this one's mild And it fades pretty fast too, like the heat. It doesn't linger too long. Um, yeah, I should have brought a napkin in here. Mm. Okay. So, um, I'll have to watch out for that little. piece of paper or whatever that was. When I open this up again. Yeah, that was actually, um, pretty good. Like, it's not like, um, I'm not particularly fond of, of, uh, spicy chocolate. But, you know, like, I, I, it's good. I definitely prefer not spicy chocolate. Yeah, I enjoyed that. I have had uh, other types of like spicy chocolate before that were like even just a tiny piece was just like, whoa, kick you in the face, you know? Like super hot. Um, which I'm thinking the Chipotle chocolate will be a little hotter <laughs> um but yeah so this is just uh sort of your standard 70 percent dark chocolate it seems like it only has two ingredients uh, cacao and sugar so we'll give this a quick try you know that um that wahio chili now, it's like, I feel it in my stomach now. Just, just a little bit. Just like a little bit. Like if I ate, if I ate that whole disc, I think my stomach would definitely be feeling like warm, like pretty warm. Right now I just feel it a little bit. Waxy, maybe. I don't know. It's interesting how the qu the the visual quality of the chocolate changes depending on the ingredients in it. 
and like I assume that's the only thing that could be making it different from one disc to the other because the ingredients are so simple right like, all right so we have our 70% Hmm. 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 So I'm tasting like that tanginess still, even with this. So maybe a lot of that tanginess is actually coming from the cacao itself. Um. It has like a slightly bitter, almost like um, kind of dry on the tongue a little bit too. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. So sorry about my table. <laughs> it's always gotta be something, huh? Okay, so this is all the ones we've tried so far. I'm gonna have to, um, like, squish these back down to get them to fit um, back into the box. I, I, I like the butcher paper. Paper thing, you know. Okay. All right. On to the <laughs> Chipotle chili. Uh, you can see I have chocolate flecks all over my hand. <laughs> Uh, I'll just have to clean that up later. That looks... That looks bad. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna keep getting chocolate on my hands, so I might as well just clean it up after. Uh, okay, so here is our... Chipotle chili. I'm anticipating this one to be a little more spicy. It says, uh, yeah, cacao, sugar, and chipotle chili powder. So let's just get this over with. I got my milk. I can be brave. with paper. I didn't want to do that. So, again, pretty unassuming. Uh, it's a little cloudier, the way it looks. Uh, but let's, uh, let's go ahead. I didn't want a big piece like this, but let's see. It looks pretty much the same as the other one, so. Hmm. It definitely has an interesting fragrance to it. Not really getting any spice yet, which makes me worry. <laughs> um, it definitely wasn't tangy, you know, like, you know, because I, especially after eating it right after this one, where it was pretty much just cacao and sugar. 
Something about the chipotle chili, like, seems to make it less tangy. Hmm. It definitely, the chipotle definitely has more of like a fragrance at this point than it does a flavor. And the heat is like barely detectable at this point. Like I feel it a little bit on the front of my tongue, like just barely. Hmm. Well, I mean, it's not bad. I'm waiting for it to like creep up on me right now, but nothing seems to be happening. describe it. It's like a little bit earthy. But like It's like it's like the smell of like earth and tomatoes and you know, some kind of chili all kind of mixed together, but it's very subtle. Like I said, it's it's not a, it's not a flavor, it's like you sort of, when you're breathing out, you smell it, you know, on your own breath, like, it's interesting. It's pretty good, like, I, I like it, it really, the heat, so after I ate those three little bites, I just sort of feel like a, like a light warm in my whole mouth, like, it's not even hot, <laughs> it's just like warm, you know? It's kind of a nice feeling, actually. Yeah, like, if I kept eating, it probably would get hotter and hotter. Like, I think it would accumulate. It seems like it's that kind of spice. Because it's definitely lingering in my mouth, like, the heat or the, the warmth. So, it's it's a nice feeling. It's not... It's not, not spicy at all, like I thought it would be. Um, yeah. So, oh, I bet this one will be really good as a hot chocolate, you know, when you have that, like, warmth combined with the actual, like, hotness of the hot chocolate, it'd be, like, extra toasty, especially, like, on a cold day, this would be really good as a hot chocolate, I think. Yeah. Alright, so, um... Get our last one here. And you know, I think I will have a sip of cho a sip of milk just to uh, cleanse my palate. And um so the printing on this paper is a little different. See how they have like white a white band with um purple circles. Whereas on this one, it's all brown with, like, white circles around the, these little circles here. I don't know. It seems like they wanted this one to, like, really be, like, a special... the special one. I mean, they put it last. And they called it super dark. They're super dark chocolate. fighting me a little bit. Okay. So this one looks pretty chalky too. I wonder, yeah. This one is, uh, 
just yeah cacao and sugar just like the other one that's just dark chocolate but I guess the, uh, the cacao ratio is higher let's make it darker less messy when I uh, break it in the paper. Alright. Mm. So that, um, that tangy, bitter, kind of like dry, um, dryness that I described uh, with the 75 or with the 70 percent um it's basically just that but like a little more intense now and you know what i noticed too is that um there's little air bubbles in all of these chocolates so it's not just like the sugar the granulated sugar in there but there's actually a bunch of little air bubbles which i think makes when you bite when you bite into the chocolate it doesn't have that like kind of like feeling to it like it's a little more sandy a little more like soft it doesn't break as cleanly as like other most other types of chocolate um you know which is not not like good or bad it's just different it just has like a different texture hmm definitely pretty tangy and pretty dry. Um, so yeah, so that's all the chocolates that we tried. down <laughs> in uh, in reverse order from how we eat them. So there they are. All of our different Mexican chocolates that I picked up from Pinnacles National National Monuments grocery store. <laughs> um, yeah. <sighs> Alright, well, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed trying all these different chocolates with me. <laughs> um, being a little bit adventurous uh, with our chocolate flavors. Um, so, yeah, anyway, uh, Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.